morning. Good morning. I am so excited to bring you another episode of my Prudent Mariner blog. And there are some accompanying articles on my website at Deepwater Happy that also have checklists for some of the safety type situations that I talk about. I'm really excited to have those. They're publishing on Deepwater Happy. And today what I want to run through is I want to run through what's in the sailing bag that I take with me every day because every day this bag goes with me. This is this is my everyday carry Osprey backpack that goes with me every single day when I'm sailing and I sail pretty often. This bag is very organized because it has lots of zippers and pouches and sections where I can keep my different equipment. I can get to everything quickly. Everything's very accessible and the red color helps everybody on the boat know exactly where my gear is and one of the most important things in my gear is right in the very top is a Vanquist bleeding control pouch and I'm going to go over this in another video because this deserves its own go through because what's in here is very very important it's what could save your life but here I'm going to run through everything that's in my bag what I carry with me on an everyday basis and why this bag works so great for me and mainly I'm going to give you an idea of some things that you might want to carry with you when you are sailing things that you might need while you're out there. I'm going to give you some ideas of some things that you might want to put in your everyday carry bag, some items that would really be helpful while you're out sailing with me. This is an Osprey Revo, which actually this model bag is not made anymore, but I'll leave a link below to one that's very similar. I specifically picked out this Osprey bag because of Osprey's reputation, but also because of the color red, because it will make it easier for everybody on the boat to find my gear, and in my gear are some things that I share with everyone so they know where they they are and I want people to be able to find them. On the back of my bag I have here my West Marine 38G inflatable PFD and in order to carry it down to the boat I simply put it like so and then I take my bag. Oh this is going to look awkward isn't it? <laughs> I take my bag and that way my PFD comes with me every single time I head to the boat along with my bag and look at this. There's actually a little pouch right here and this is where my chapstick stays because usually on the way down to the boat that's when I remember. Anyway, back to the bag. Back to the bag. And yes, we have a visitor. So this is my 38G and I do have my initials on it right here and I have my name written on it inside because it is quite an investment when you purchase one of these inflatable PFDs. The cartridge alone generally sets you back about $40 to replace that. Bill's talked about getting my name embroidered on it so that when it covers my crew shirt, because I work as a sailing instructor at St. Augustine Sailing, and I like for people to be able to know my name when I'm teaching them so that they don't have to feel awkward or search. And so a lot of our shirts will say Kim on my shirt, but this covers my shirt and I wear this all the time when I'm in a class. So he was talking about having my name embroidered across it, but I thought that's like to put Captain Kim, that's a little... I don't know, it's like putting on airs or something. So I haven't decided about that. So at this point, it just has my name written with a permanent marker, but that's always with me. Next, you're going to be able to tell what's really important to me. The things that are on the pouches are the things that I plan to access the most often in my bag. And so what's on this side is two different stream to see. There's one that's the tinted sunscreen and one that's the regular sunscreen. And you can see them about to replace this one with a new one. And the reason that I chose these are several years back, I had an episode where I was poisoned by sunscreen. Just had a little bit too much active ingredient, whichever brand I was using. I don't know which brand I was using because we have a drawer at work where Everything that's been left on the boats just goes into this drawer and you just go in and, and help yourself. Well, I learned that's not, that doesn't work really well. A lot of those brands that have a name that sounds like there's something really good for your skin or it's a skin product that you trust, they actually are not that great for you. They have avobenzene and octosinosate and all of those ingredients that are actually prohibited in a lot of vacation destinations. And so 
stream to see was the one I did a lot of research. I found a female chemist in Florida. She puts these products together. They are tested. They actually are tested on fish, which that could be a controversial thing, but not really because without them being tested, then they would be like all the other sunscreens that are killing millions of fish and killing a lot of coral. And that's what you don't want. Anything that's on your body is going to touch the boat. It's going to get rinsed into the water. And that's bad. I think it was one drop in the equivalent of three Olympic-sized swimming pools is enough to kill a lot of the coral. And that's definitely not what we want. As boaters, we really want for the products that we use on our body to be safe for our body, but also to be safe for the water. So if you find anything that says reef safe on the front, remember it's what's on the back that matters. And I'll leave a list of ingredients below of things that you don't want touching your body. So that's definitely on the outside of my bag because I reach it constantly. There's always a hair tie in the outside pocket and one of these skeleton tools. My good Leatherman is further in the bag. This one is what I would call like a throwaway tool. It's a less expensive... Oh, I can't even tell you who this is made by. It's a less expensive one that if I loan it to someone and they drop it overboard and it sinks, I'm not going to be crushed. But it is on the outside of my bag so that it is really easy to access. On the other side, what's over here, are some funny things. There is a stream to see, uh, I forget what you call these, but I wear it around the neck to keep the sun off of me, but if I'm scuba diving, I wear it over my head to keep my hair in place. I have a softwood plug right in the outside of my bag where I think I'm going to need it. Hello, kitty. Mwah. Yes, I see you. I see you. And then an assortment of pens because in our cruise sales, everyone's always wanting me to sign off on their logbook. So I have some pens there, more hair ties, a pencil in case they need to do any navigating. And then I have my old bosun's knife from when I worked on the wind jammers up in Maine. And the best aspect of this one is that it has a marlin spike so I can tease open lines that have been you know, tied too tight. And this one is the Curry Lock Spike Captain. And it does have a blade on here for cutting lines. And you can see it probably needs a little bit of lubrication. Uh, and then I have another that has uh, like a saw and everything on it. But the main thing there is the Marlin Spike. And I braided the line myself and it has a brass hook on this side to hook it onto your pants. But generally it just stays in my bag. And there are a couple more pins in here. Now, getting into the meat of what's inside the bag. And this Osprey bag is great because it's got several sections. And it has a padded area also in case you're carrying a laptop. I've got a, a front portion here. And in here, in, in a plastic bag that I use over and over, I have got the federal regulations book and mine is so worn out the cover's missing but this is just I use it in class to run through any of the regulations like what 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 do I need for lights what do I need for this and the other is one of the American sailing log books I also use this I usually put a cheat sheet with a sticky note with everyone's name on it who's in my class so I remember their names faster but it's just where I run through and check different skills. That's probably not something every sailor is going to have in their bag, but something I have in mine. And then I have another uh, neck gaiter in case the first one gets lost. There's some um, Velcro in case I need to Velcro something together. And then also in here, protected, is my actual real Leatherman that I probably should wear on a belt on my waist, but I don't always wear a belt, so it just stays further in my bag. And then I have one of these nifty. This is a Kestrel, which is a wind indicator. It measures wind, and it does some barometer functions as well, but mainly I use it for the wind. I like to check and see and kind of run it against the ship's wind indicator and see if they agree or if I'm on the smaller 22 foot boats that we teach on they don't have an actual wind indicator that measures the wind so I use this this one's from Kestrel and this one is the 2500 the next thing I have is a light from Streamlight and we always joke about these lights because if it's loose from its lanyard and you drop it it always falls with the button down which illuminates the light so you can find it in the dark if you've dropped it but this is just something great if I need to check into the bilge look somewhere I've got a light that's handy and dependable and that one uh, it is the 0818 is the model on that and I never wear it around my neck but I would if I needed to. 
and I'm able to. So that's what's in this front section. And in this Osprey bag, it's not only got the front section, but there's also the mesh section right here that just allows you to separate your items so that you can go exactly to where they are. If it's in the dark, you know exactly what you've loaded into what part of your bag, and you can find it. Next thing in my bag are just sort of some, I guess you would call them some domestic items. I have two visors. One is a backup in case one of them blows overboard. I haven't had that happen yet. And also on the back of my visor, I usually keep a hair tie so that I always have one. The next thing is I have from Bill. The wind indicator was from Bill also. I have just an anorak. This one happens to be an L.L. Bean anorak. Just something to keep the wind off, but not too heavy and hot. And that usually sinks down further in the bag because the item that I keep on the very, very top of the bag is this um, FanQuest first aid kit. And this isn't just a first aid kit. This is a bleeding control kit. This has got a Gerber cutter on the outside. And I think I'll save this. This deserves its own its own vlog. I have a cat just sitting here waiting. Uh, this deserves its own vlog because what's in here is really important as far as bleeding control. We'll go over that at a different point. To go along with my inflatable PFD, I also have the two-part tether. This is the part that connects to your PFD like so. And then these are the ones that you use. The ends of this tether are to walk yourself further up on the boat. Some boats are so wide that when you go forward up toward the shrouds, then when you need to get up to the head of the main, you can't actually get there because your tether's not long enough. So you have to clip once, stage it again, and clip on through. So this just stays in my bag. It's kind of heavy. That's probably another two or three pounds right there, but it's worth having it right where I can use it. I have another backup Columbia SPF shirt just to keep the sun off. I find that uh, I don't really want to burn in July, August, and September. Pretty warm in Florida. Chance of burning. Next in here is a Vortex set of binoculars. And this is just a small one. Bill also gave me a larger set of Marathon binoculars that have the Kamal, the little lines that you can use to figure out distance. This is just a small set that fits into my bag a little bit better. There you go. No Kamal on these, but they are just super handy and very clear, very good quality. These are from Vortex. And the interesting thing is they I also have a mount that if I'm going to use them for any sort of target practice, I can also mount them on a tripod, which is very handy. That's lighter set. Next in here, in this bag all contained so that I can grab it out and drag it up on deck with me is my main foul weather gear jacket and all the you know there are so many different qualities of a good foul weather jacket one of them is to have a lot of really bright somewhere on it very bright and also if there's any of this reflective tape that's good the one thing I would say lacking and this is the West Marine uh, off weather, uh, offshore jacket. The one thing I would say it's lacking is in length. I wish it was longer because you know how when you sit down and of course you are wet because you are sitting <laughs> in water. Oh, there goes the flashlight. It is, oh gosh. It is lined. It does have the ability to cinch it in at the waist so wind doesn't go up your shirt and it's got lots of pockets on the outside. This pocket I have got in here a whistle and I probably in one of the pockets also have a mirror in here just in case I were to need that to signal someone. It has some inside pockets as well. So that was a bit of an investment and worth taking care of. So generally the first jacket to get wet is the one that I'm carrying with me. And then once it gets, if it gets soaked, then I move on to my second, even tougher jacket. More hair ties. And then I have a couple interesting things in here. This was a bag recycled from some MyFlex hoses for scuba diving but in here I have got my captain's license which is actually like a little passport book and then I also have our drug consortium letters that we are part of a random drug testing program as required by law. This is the neatest thing. This is from Anchor and this is a, it's called Power Port Solar. 
I'll leave a link to this below, too, because it is the coolest thing ever. It's designed for you to be able to tie on the back of your backpack while you're backpacking and charge devices. However, the way I use it is I simply lay it somewhere on the boat, and in this end, there is a little connection right there, and this is where you would plug in your phone, your GPS, or anything like that that you need charging. So it's it's waterproof and, and sun resistant and all that and I just pull it out and I lay it somewhere on the boat to charge my devices if I'm using maybe I'm using my phone to look at Navionics or look at tides and I don't want to put my phone below where I can't get to it I could just leave it up in the cockpit with me and charge it like this so that stays in the back of this bag and in the back of the Osprey bag there's a section right here that actually clips so that these items don't fall in with the rest and there's good padding back here I think that's actually intended to use for a laptop but I use it for my solar charger in the front portion there are all sorts of zippered sections here and in here I have things like deodorant, feminine products, nuns, more hair ties items of that nature, kind of personal nature. It looks like I also have a toothbrush and toothpaste because heavens knows nobody wants to, <laughs> to forget their toothbrush and toothpaste. And I even keep in here a real fork for my lunch. And I have some other sets also. Uh, what else is in here? There's another bag, another little pocket right here that has one of these little charging devices. Some of our boats have a cigarette lighter plug and this allows me to plug in something with a USB like a GPS or cell phone, anything of that nature. I can plug in and charge off of the boat so that stays in one of these little pockets. And then I have a couple more pens in here and that is a tour of my everyday carry, my Osprey bag, and what goes on the boat with me every single day. You see it's pretty light. It's very convenient. It has adjustable everything. <laughs> you can adjust the length here and you can also you have a band for around your waist. So if you're actually hiking somewhere and you want to study it, then that's the other way that you can adjust it. So this is the Osprey Revo. Like I said, this one's not made anymore, but we were down at Pura Vida Dive Shop in Riviera Beach and I got to see some of the new items that are coming out from Osprey. They've got some packing cubes that look absolutely fantastic. They also have a rolling bag that's really neat that's going to give my Akona bag a run for its money because it's not only a rolling bag for your dive gear but it's also waterproof. But I got to look and see a lot of the new Osprey products and they are just the quality is every bit as good as this. Now I've had this bag about 10 years and it goes on the boat with me every single day. And like I said it's red so that everybody can find it because in my bag of course is at the top of my bag I always keep the bleeding control so this is just some ideas of when people say well what should I take on the boat with me every day this is what I carry with me because I'm moving boat to boat every day I could be on a 35 footer I could be on a 22 footer I could be on a 45 footer I always know what boat I'm going to be on and I always know the equipment that's on the boat that I'm going to be on but these are the things that I like to carry as well bleeding control solar charger items like that that go with me every single day. One of the features that's really great on this Osprey bag that I want to show you is all of the spots where there's a little bit of reflective tape. There's some on the back and also toward the front there's some here on the piping and if you have any experience with that you know that this tape shows up like crazy in headlights or in the light anything like that at night. It's so very visible and I just love that they have added some of this tape in a couple crucial spots on the backpack so that you are extremely visible. Quick shout out to Pure Vida Dive Shop in Riviera Beach, Florida. They have one of the best displays of stream to sea that I have seen anywhere. They have got everything you need. While we were down at Pure Vida Dive Shop, one of the things that Bill and I both picked up was the Garmin Decent Mark 2S and I couldn't show you in the video because right now it is connected to my computer because I am downloading the sailing app and it is busy syncing the sailing app. I can't wait 
to see how that works. I like to call myself the prudent mariner because I am the person who is always so concerned with everything going perfectly on the boat. I'm concerned with safety and I'm concerned mainly with preventing anything bad from happening. And this series is designed to help make some of those decisions, inspire you to practice some things and really give a lot of thought to your procedures and how you operate your vessel and the items that you have with you to keep everyone on board safe. So please subscribe so you can get notifications of the next video. Hit the little bell below. Little bell. Click it. Smash that button. <laughs> Smash that button so you get notifications of the next video. If you're finding this information useful, please like, please subscribe so you get notification of the next video. In the Prudent Mariner series, I'm going to be going over a lot of ways that you can practice safety on your boat. Some drills that you can practice. I know last week was the anchoring drill. I hope you've tried it out. I hope you've ch challenged yourself to see just how long does it take you to get from the stern to the bow and get that anchor over on that one. Leave me a comment. How fast can you do it? My best time was I think 36 to 39 seconds. I've seen as much as a minute. Let me know how fast are you able to get your anchor over and hope you join me. Click subscribe so you get a notification of the next Prudent Mariner Deepwater Happy video. It's going to be something I think next up is one of a safety maneuver or how to perform something safety on the boat. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. I hope that this inspired you to think about what's in your everyday carry and determine what do you you need to take on the boat with you so that you are ready for anything that comes up. Happy sailing! Bye!